The refuge there, they say, may hold two to four billion uh, barrels of oil that we might get someday when, from extraction process at who knows what cost to the refuge, to the Gwich'in, to the caribou, to the ecosystem there. Several months worth of our petroleum. Is it worth spoiling a place like that for several more months of petroleum when we have so much yet to do in terms of efficiencies and mass transit and other ways of, of living less on the petroleum and more in tune with the planet? So we try everywhere we go to see what are the connections between our lifestyles, our choices, and the well-being of the creation as well as the people who are living in these places. Tell us a little bit about Arctic Village and how you started bringing people here. Sure. Uh, yeah, we started coming to Arctic Village in 2002. Um, I first met some Gwich'in Indian leaders at a National Council of Churches meeting down in Washington, D.C., and then in another setting. And they were talking about their concerns for the possibility of oil drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Um, they are concerned for several reasons, uh, one of which is environmental and what it will do to that pristine wilderness area. But also, uh, the Gwich'in very much have been dependent on the porcupine caribou herd for thousands of years for their sustenance. And the porcupine caribou herd goes to the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge to give birth uh, in late May and early June every year. Migrate up there from the southern part uh, from the well, from this parts of Alaska and other parts of Canada, and then have their birthing process there and are there for a few weeks or a couple of months, and then head back south past the Gwich'in communities. So the Gwich'in see it both as an environmental issue and as a, a deeply cultural issue for them, whether or not there'd be drilling there and what effect the drilling would have on the porcupine herd. In fact, they see it as, they call it a human rights issue. Uh, their culture and their historic way of life uh, in jeopardy uh, thanks to the possibility of oil drilling. So that was one reason we came here. Another one is we're just very interested in the situation of indigenous people wherever they are in the world. Uh, they're often the ones who've been overrun, had their lands overrun, their cultures overrun, societies overrun, populations in decline for various factors. So they're some of the most vulnerable people on the planet. Um, and so we have a special affinity for trying to f learn about these cultures and support them and sort of stand by them in any way we can as they try to continue to survive uh, and hold in trust for us a great wealth of knowledge about places like this, but also wherever they are around the world. 
Um, so that was another reason we came. And then um, also a friend of mine had been here before um, and told me it was one of the most beautiful places he'd ever seen. And so part of the reason, one other reason to come here is just, it's a, an amazing biodiverse uh, ecosystem that a lot of people have not had the chance to visit. And uh, we thought it would be kind of inspiring for people to come here, plus very educational to learn about the Gwich'in, their culture, their concerns about the drilling in the refuge, and what they have to share with us, what we can learn from them, as well as whatever we may share with them. On our visits to um, Arctic Village, Alaska, we are hosted generally by Marion and Charlie Sweeney. They are Gwich'in people. Uh, they've lived in this community all of their married life, uh, and Marion was born there. And Charlie particularly is, uh, I guess, maybe the most renowned outdoorsman in the community. He knows the ways of the wilderness. He is a, could survive there if he needs to. He lives off the land and provides for his family, as well as for other members in the community by his hunting and fishing skills. Um, Charlie and Marion have raised their family there and find their family continuing on their tradition. Charlie teaches his own children, as well as other young people in the community, the ways of the Gwich'in and the ways of living off the land. And so as we travel to Arctic Village, we'll meet Charlie and Marion, uh, some members of their family, as well as other members of the Arctic Village community who are our hosts on our visits there. Arctic Village is, is, a, is a small village. It's, it's, out, it's re, in a real remote area. Uh, there's not much involvement with outer people. Uh, there's very little money there. Uh, a lot of things, a lot of things that's, that's really, really, uh, I mean, you know, having to do with out, out, outer people, I mean, we're pretty much to our own here. But uh, there's one thing that we all have in common, and that is we live off the land. Uh, 65, 70, 75 percent of our diet is from off this land here. Uh, when we go out hunting, uh, it, it costs quite a bit. It costs quite a bit to go out on a hunting trip, especially when you've got to pay five dollars for a gallon of gas. Um, and then when you go out, you're not guaranteed that you're going to get anything. You come back and you go out again and try again. You're successful. You're successful. Take, for instance, this year with the caribou. Uh, we had such a bad fire season here in Alaska, and the smoke was just filled in this whole valley here. And I think that has a lot to do with why we don't have no caribou here right now. Normally, this time of year, we're up, up in the mountain, have a camp there. We drying meat, everything. Well, that wasn't possible this year because the caribou didn't show up. Um, with the caribou, the caribou, uh, once every year, one, one specific time every single year, the caribou have to take a journey. They take a journey up to the uh, to the uh, the coastal plains. Every single year that happens. Now, why is that? You ask yourself, why is that? Every single year they go up there at that certain time of year. That's because they're at peace of mind there. There's no disturbance whatsoever. And that's their birth, birthing grounds. That place there is where a caribou takes its first breath of fresh air, its first step on earth, its first bite to eat. The vegetation there is, is different than other places. And the caribou know that that vegetation helps the, the calves get stronger faster that's why they continue to go there year after year after year they continue to go there when they when when they uh, when they're there they're also able to 
keep a good eye out for danger. It's a place where they can keep a good eye out for danger. And also it's a place where they can, if the mosquitoes are bad, they can go to certain places where mosquitoes aren't as bad. Uh, when the caribou come through, when they first start coming through, through the mountains here and start reaching Arctic Village, you can tell every single person in Arctic Village their attitude changes. Everybody's happy. There's caribou coming through. Everybody's going to eat good. Now this, this year it was a little different because the caribou didn't come through. And so we have to rely on other things like moose, and like fish. And the difference between moose and caribou is there's a lot more caribou out, caribou out there than there are moose. So it's harder to hunt moose. It's harder to find them. Therefore, that's why I say when you go out, especially when you go out looking for a moose, you're not guaranteed to get one because it's harder to find and they're harder to get. When you don't get nothing, when you don't get nothing, it's very, very hard for people because there's very little jobs in the village and the food costs so much and it's virtually impossible to live off of store-bought food year-round here. Our lives, our lives mainly depend on out here, out here. God gave us this land. God gave us all this. Uh, nature provides everything for us. Timber for our, our cabins, wood for our heating our houses, moose and caribou and fish for eating, berries for eating. Everything that, everything that you could almost possibly need is out here, right here. But the main thing that we rely on though is caribou because uh, um, it's a lot easier to get and uh, there's a lot more caribou. If the caribou are gone, uh, the village, we, w we won't know what to do. I mean, the village will be at a loss. And if it has to come to it, if, if the caribou are gone, if it has to come to it, people will have to move somewhere else to make a living. You have to make a living, you have to eat. Like I said, uh, 65, 70, 75 percent of our diet is from off the land. Everything, everything that most people depend on is mainly the caribou, the moose and fish. If that is taken away from us, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? They say that oil development up there won't just, oil development in the cabin areas up there won't affect the calvings. But it's a risk. That's, it's a risk. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And that's a risk that we can't take. If they develop oil up there in the caribou leaf and we're and we don't see it no more, what are we going to do? Our lives depend on it. Arctic Village is an unusual place to come. There's no roads, there's no restaurants, there's no hotels. Unless you knew somebody, virtually accessible. So how did you first get access to the Arctic Village? Well, it is the most remote human settlement in the Western Hemisphere. So we take some small amount of pride in bringing people to this remote outpost of human civilization. Uh, after meeting the Gwich'in people there at the uh, Trimble Gilbert and other representatives at the National Council of Churches meeting and another meeting, uh, I asked them about contact people. They put me in touch with someone in the village who then put me in touch with Charlie Sweeney and his wife Marion, and uh, they agreed to host our first delegation back in 2002. And so um, we arrived here hoping there'd be someone at the small airstrip to meet us, and sure enough, Charlie was there. And so they've been our hosts and our guides ever since that time. And what do you do when you come to Arctic Village? 
Well, we just try as much as possible to experience life here above the Arctic Circle, uh, to talk with the Gwich'in community, whoever of them has time and, and interest in speaking with us, to learn about their own traditions, their culture, uh, the way their daily life goes on. And then we come out into the wild, so to speak. Uh, we're cooking over a campfire over there. We slept in tents around through the area here, up on the mountainside here where we are. We took a long hike yesterday out to see a, an impressive, huge fishing lake, Old John Lake. Uh, that's sort of a, an, an important landmark for the Gwich'in, as well as a supply of fish and food. Um, and then we head up the river uh, to see that part of Gwich'in life, um, going up to a fish camp. We hope to see some moose along the way. You never know. Um, that's one of the animals that Gwich'in hunt, along with the caribou. Uh, we'll certainly hopefully catch lots of fish. And if we're extremely lucky, a cross paths with a couple of musk, musk ox or something. Uh, these creatures, these almost prehistoric creatures, make their way into this area sometimes. We've seen their tracks before, but never seen them. So we are just trying to experience life as it is here in this community with these people uh, to learn about that and also how it can inform us for how to live within the rhythms of nature uh, and with the planet as, and the creation as God has created it without uh, leaving a big footprint. They enjoy this time right here more than any time of the year. That's why they're just 100% focused on eating, especially for the young ones, mm -hmm. where you always see the cow with the young ones where there's a lot of that willow, that kind there, and they'll stay there. Because, uh, that mother moose knows that winter is coming up and they need that calf strong as possible. They're just like you. If you're not eating good, you're going to be weak, right? Mm -hmm. So she's the same thing with that calf. Right now is what we call the peak of the season. Uh, moose and caribou right now, all they're only focused on right now is eating. All batched up. This genuine moose dinner. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. And that's right a special there. kind of willow. This is called pussy willow. Okay. Yeah. This one here is a different kind of willow. It's still willow, but it's a different kind. Okay. It's just like a, a blueberry and a cranberry. It's, see the difference? Yeah. But it's still berries. Yes. Okay, just like this one. This is a willow and this is a willow, but they're just different kinds. And they like the new sprouts. This the... is the one that they like. This one here, this brown, this is their food. Their mouse crunches over it and just skins it off. That's why they're, when they eat, they're eating this way. They don't eat this way oh, like really? us. They eat this way. And they do, the leaves Terrible and the, the they yeah. like the leaves and the and yeah. the branch. The uh, the the uh, coating, this brown stuff. Oh, that's all. They that's eat. all they eat, and then they eat grass. They'll eat the entire grass. Okay, this like is this. What they eat when on the willow. Okay. Right here. This is. See the difference here. This is. They're both willow, but just different kinds. Okay. But this is moose. What they eat right here. This one. Right here. You even have if you you even taste it. What's it taste like? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you taste the wilderness in there. I don't know what wilderness tastes like, but that's what it tastes like. <laughs> well, it's a little a little bitter. Yeah, I'll get some bunch of off so everybody could try it. Everybody could try it. Chew on it. Yeah, it's, chew it's, on it. It's the aspirin. Chew. Yeah. Uh, You've tried it. Oh, chew yeah, on it. Yeah. Even the, even this uh, this part right here. Mm -hmm. Just chew on it. Break yeah. it loose and taste it. Chew on it. Mm. 
same thing. It's not fully green and it's not fully dry yet. It's just right for them. They like to eat on this. Where it's half dry, half green. And that's the same thing with these. It's starting to dry out, getting ready for winter. Now in the springtime when they first come out, they thrive on this because they've been with a dried up old willow, like, you know, it's not old willow, but dried up willow all winter long and it starts sprouting out and all that. They just munch it down on it. Mm -hmm. So throughout the summer, they just roam around eating the real fresh of this and the real fresh grass. See, it's different seasons, so they eat the different foods at the same, it's the same food, but it's changing. Mm -hmm. So. To see the world in a grain of sand And heaven in a wildflower Hold infinity in the palm of your hand And eternity in an So it means something to the community here that we come, that we listen, that we learn, that we build relationships. And I think it also means something to our people to come, to listen, to learn, to build relationships, both with the people in our groups, because camping out like this together for a week on the tundra, it does bind you together, as well as building a relationship with the community that we've uh, been visiting. I think anyone who goes into these communities with the right attitude, not the attitude that, here, let us show you how to do this, or let us teach you the things we know, or, or here, uh, here's what you really need to make a successful life, but to go in with an open heart, open hand, open spirit, to learn as well as to share, uh, and to be humble in the process. But they have a lot to offer us in terms of resilience and hospitality and community, things that we sometimes are a little short on. And so I think if you go with an attitude of wanting to receive those gifts that they have to offer us, as well as give whatever we have to share. Uh, people on the whole are, are, are welcoming and, and are glad you have come. Truthful spirit, dwell in me. I myself will graciously and with words that help and heal Would your life in mind reveal And with action bold and me Would for Christ my Savior 
beautiful spirit dwell with me I myself will truthful be and with wisdom that kind and clear let your light in mine appear and with action lovingly speak my Lord's sincerity silent spirit dwell in me I myself will silent be quiet as a growing blade Some people might think that uh, why don't we uh, build a big fence somewhere out there and have a big herd of caribou go in there and we keep them in there and that make things easier for us and all that. And, uh, that's, that's not the way we live. Um, those caribou, that land out there is, is their land. They're, that's their right to roam through their land out there. Um, God put that land out there for, for all of us. God put that land out there for the caribou. If, if you did that, it would be like putting the caribou in jail. Yeah. But, uh, caribou, they migrate. They migrate different areas. Just like in the springtime, they migrate up to the cabin areas. That's where they have their calves. With this caribou herd, uh, Arctic Village isn't the only only village that depends on this herd. There's other, other villages like Fort McPherson, Old Crow, Klavik, Inuvik, all those areas, all those other uh, villages, they all depend on this caribou, these, this caribou herd.